In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We are going to use the vote of Mass in honor of the union of all Christians. Today is the birthday of Martin Luther King Jr. And we remember all of his fights for civil rights. But we want to pray also for the natural rights. The rights and laws that are written on the fleshy tablets of the human heart. And for all those times we have been cowardly in defending the rights of others. We want to repent for that now and beg God for courage. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. together those you have united. Look kindly on all who follow Jesus, your Son. We are all consecrated to you by our common baptism. Make us one in the fullness of faith and keep us one in the fellowship of love. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Hannah rose after a meal at Shiloh and presented herself before the Lord. At the time, Eli the priest was sitting on a chair near the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In her bitterness, she prayed to the Lord, weeping, weeping copiously, and she made a vow promising, O Lord of hosts, if you look with pity on the misery of your handmaid, if you remember me and do not forget me, if you give your handmaid a male child, I will give him to the Lord for as long as he lives. Neither wine nor liquor shall he drink, and no razor shall ever touch his head. As she remained long at prayer before the Lord, Eli watched her mouth, for Hannah was praying silently. Though her lips were moving, her voice could not be heard. Eli, thinking her drunk, said to her, How long will you make a drunken show of yourself? Sober up from your wine. It isn't that, my lord, Hannah answered. I am an unhappy woman. I have had neither wine nor liquor. I was only pouring out my troubles to the Lord. Do not think your servant, your handmaid, a ne'er-do-well. 
my prayer has been prompted by my deep sorrow and misery. Eli said, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She replied, Think kindly of your maidservant, and left. She went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and no longer appeared downcast. Early the next morning they worshipped before the Lord, and then returned to their home in Ramah. When Elkanah had relations with his wife Hannah, the Lord remembered her. She conceived, and at the end of her term bore a son, whom she called Samuel, since she had asked the Lord for him. Verbum Domini. My heart rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. My heart rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in my God. I have swallowed up my enemies. I rejoice in my victory. My heart rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. The bows of the mighty are broken, while the tottering gird on strength. The well-fed hire themselves out for bread, while the hungry batten on spoil. The barren wife bears seven sons, while the mother of many languishes. My heart the Lord, my Savior. The Lord puts to death and gives life. He casts down to the netherworld. He raises up again. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He humbles. He also exalts. He raises the needy from the dust, from the ash heap he lifts up the poor, to seat them with nobles, and make a glorious throne their heritage. My heart rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. Alleluia, Alleluia. O oh Lord, give joy to my heart. Your teaching is light to my eyes. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominus phobis quo, Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundo Marco. In the city of Capernaum, Jesus entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and began to teach. The people were spellbound by his teaching because he taught with authority and not like the scribes. There appeared in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit that shrieked, What do you want of us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him sharply, Be quiet. Come out of the man. At that, the unclean spirit convulsed the man violently and with a loud shriek came out of him. All who looked on were amazed. They began to ask one another, what does this mean? A completely new teaching in a spirit of authority. He gives orders to unclean spirits and they obey. From that point on, his reputation spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Verbum Domini
and Jesus' answers, he never seems to hesitate, does he? He teaches with authority, not like the scribes and the Pharisees. But I would expect that of somebody who is God, who knew who he was, because he always enjoyed the beatific vision and surely in common with angels that he created he would have acquired knowledge yes he grew in wisdom and grace before God and men yes he did but his knowledge was perfect and also about himself he is the Son of God, and he knew it, and he claimed it, fulfilling the prophecies, working miracles, rising from the dead. And this is why you and I have thrown our lot in with him. He lived for us, he died for us, he rose for us, and he loves us. And if he established a church, I would expect the church to speak with the same kind of authority not like the scribes and the Pharisees. And this is his intention. Remember what he said, he who hears you hears me. He who despises you despises me. And to Peter, thou art Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Go forth and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you all days, even to the consummation of the world. That's his promise. This is why the church speaks with authority and not like the scribes and the Pharisees. And this is why the church is indefectible. It will not falter. The soul of the Catholic church is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Blessed Trinity. And this is the understanding of the church for the last 2,000 years without hesitation to speak what God wants it to speak. Yes, we are the people of God, the people of the pilgrim community, as we're called. But this church is also the body of Christ, the mystical, mysterious body of Jesus Christ, the extension of Jesus Christ in the world today. See how the church understands itself from the Second Vatican Council. And if you have not read those documents, you should. And don't take other people's interpretations on them except the official ones. Read them for yourself, maybe for the first time. Read the Code of Canon Law, the new one, promulgated around 1983. Oh, it has that beautiful pastoral approach wonderful like the Second Vatican Council but there's clout in those laws too again with the experience of 2,000 years and you cannot beat 2,000 years experience except maybe being an 18 year old senior in high school and if you really want to get the final word read the Catechism of the Catholic Church which the Holy Father considers his greatest achievement in his entire pontificate, the catechism, that settles it all. You'd be amazed at telephone calls we get from people from out of state, not from the state of Alabama. We're too well informed here. The treatment that some of our people get from certain so-called teachers of the faith, it's really an abomination. And all they have to do is to consult the catechism to get the truth. And if anybody would teach you anything differently, stuff your ears with cotton, put your earmuffs on and your big cap over your ears and your pocket right up over your head so you don't have to hear that. Because if you're trying to reconcile all those different voices out there who are pontificating to you and to me, you're going to end up schizophrenic with a split personality. Hear one voice, that of John Paul II, and you hear the voice of Peter the voice of Jesus Christ himself. And there are certain issues now that really need special care. Always we needed the doctrinal interpretations in regard to the Eucharist, confession, 
the papacy and all those important things as Alice Maynell, the great convert of a hundred years ago, said, sure we need it in matters of dogmatic and systematic theology, yes, for sure, but even more so on the moral issues. Because the whole culture that you and I are in today is against that. And that's why we had that dear Pope Pius XI, never too popular. He was tough. He said it kind of in a rough way at times, too. Wrote that beautiful encyclical on Christian marriage, Costi Canubii. And it was well timed for what came out of Lambeth in England at the same time on the misuse of marriage. And then the Evangelium Vitae of John Paul II on human life. And then Humani Vitae of Paul VI, the most maligned man, I believe, of the 20th century protecting the channeling of human life. And once you start attacking the channeling of human life, it's not long before you are attacking life itself. Paul VI wrote that encyclical in July of 1968. Four and a half years later, do you know what happened on January the 22nd, 1973? Out of the Supreme Court of the United States of America, the last bastion of defense for life was partially blocked and knocked down by those who resisted Paul VI in this wonderful, all-important teaching. And that's why it's okay now in this country of ours to kill the preborn and get away with it. It's the law of the land. How pathetic. This is not just Catholic legislation. Everybody who's a member of the human race is bound by the natural law, the law that's written on the fleshy tablets of the human heart. And God made that heart, and he knows what makes for that heart's happiness, not just in the next world, but very much so in this world. Read the scriptures, too, like the story here of Hannah, how important human life is, and especially for us in this culture of death. After Jesus Christ's presence in the Blessed Sacrament. Can you think of anything more precious in this world than human life? Tell me if you can after church. I'd love to hear what is more precious than human life. I saw a sign out of the parking lot there the other day. I hadn't noticed it before. It says, our forest, our future. Some wonderful ecologist is interested in preserving the forest, and I'm right with them too. Of course, we need paper, don't we, that comes from the forest for all those emails that we print out. But wouldn't a better bumper sticker read something like, our children, our future. And do you remember John the 23rd, now blessed? He had these beautiful Italian ladies there with him in Rome one day. And he said, go home and have a lot of beautiful children. The Lord did not intend the world to be only a cemetery or an ashtray for those who opt for cremation. And John Paul II, too. Deprive your children of anything except brothers and sisters. When they asked Newman why he became Catholic, he said he wanted to receive one Holy Communion. When they asked Gilbert Keith Chesterton why he became Catholic, he said he wanted to have his sins taken away. Ask Shaughnessy here why he would become Catholic if he were not a Catholic. There's only one issue for me, only one. It would be the stand of this church on human life and all those beautiful laws of human sexuality that channel human life any other position is dishonest or absolute nonsense. And thank God we have a church that sticks up for the truth, no matter what the cost is and how painful it is. Yes, we stay with our church that speaks with authority and hope we can be part of that scene to share the good news and not back off because Maybe we have not cleaned up our own acts sufficiently enough. 
to cast the first stone at that idol of death in our culture today. Or for fear that we won't be too popular because we speak the truth. Wouldn't that be a horrible indictment on Judgment Day? That those watchdogs who should have been keeping the teaching of the church intact lost their bark and lost their bite because of their cowardice. I'd hate to be in their shoes, and I pray to God I'll never be part of that. Faith means we're willing to die in testimony of a truth, and we surely need that. But beyond that, we need conviction. Conviction means we're not willing just to die in testimony of a truth, but also willing to live in accordance with our truth. To speak the truth in love. And that's the message of Jesus Christ, who speaks with such authority and conviction. Either he is the Son of God, or he's the greatest fraud in the history of the world. We believe he is the Son of God, and his church is a divine institution founded by one who is the Son of God. Christ taught us to set our hearts on the kingdom of God. In that kingdom, all that we need will be given to us. Until then, we turn to him in prayer. For Pope John Paul II, the Vicar of Christ on earth, may he be strengthened in health of mind and body and continue to confirm his brothers in the faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the Lord gather into one all who bear the name of Christian, that the world may come to a true belief and faith in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married people, may they enjoy the strength and guidance of the Holy Spirit and have the grace to live together in constant love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work at EWTN, May they be blessed in their single-hearted service of God and His Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the holocaust of abortion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing for death, that they be strengthened and know the peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own dear Mother Angelica and all of her needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, lover of mankind, fill us with the love your spirit gives. May we live in a manner worthy of our calling. Make us witnesses of your truth to all men and women and help us work to bring all believers together in the unity of faith and the fellowship of peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my brothers, my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, by one perfect sacrifice, you gained us as your people. Bless us and all your church with gifts of unity and peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father in heaven, it is right that we should give you thanks and glory. You are the one God, living and true. Through all eternity, you live in unapproachable light, source of life and goodness. You have created all things to fill your creatures with every blessing and lead all men to the joyful vision of your light. Countless hosts of angels stand before you to do your will. They look upon your splendor and praise you night and day, united with them. And in the name of every creature under heaven, we too praise your glory as we say. Sanctus, 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 acknowledge your greatness all your actions show your wisdom and love you formed man in your own likeness and set him over the whole world to serve you his creator and to rule over all creatures even when he disobeyed you and lost your friendship you did not abandon him to the power of death but helped all men to seek and find you again and again you offered a covenant to man and through the prophets taught him to hope for salvation. Father, you so loved the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. He was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, a man like us in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to those in sorrow joy. In fulfillment of your will, he gave himself up to death, but by rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe to complete his work on earth and bring us the fullness of grace. Father, May this Holy Spirit sanctify these offerings. Let them become the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we celebrate the great mystery which he left us as an everlasting covenant. He always loved those who were his own in the world. When the time came for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, he showed the depth of his love. While they were at supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat it this is my body which will be given up for you
In the same way he took the cup filled with wine, who gave you thanks, and giving the cup to his disciples said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death, his descent among the dead his resurrection, and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon this sacrifice which you have given to your church, and by your Holy Spirit gather all who share this one bread and one cup into the one body of Christ, a living sacrifice of praise. Lord, remember those for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially John Paul, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and bishops and clergy everywhere. Remember those who take part in this offering, those here present and all your people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Father, in your mercy, grant also to us, your children, to enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and your apostles and saints. Then in your kingdom, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. <laughs> through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Precepter salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater noster, qui es in cedis, Propitius pacem in diebus nostris, but ope misericordiae tuae adiuti, et a peccato simus semper liberi, et ab omni perturbatione secordi, expectantes beatam spem, et adventum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. We are the Oh, 
Domine Jesu Christe, quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meam do vobis, ne respicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tuae, eam quae secundum voluntatem tuam, pacificare et coordinare dineris, qui vivis et regnas in saecula saeculorum. Pax Domini sit semper vobis cum. Et nun Agnus Dei, ecce qui tolit peccata mundi, beati qui ad cenam agni vocati sunt. Domine non sum dignus, ut in testa pecca meam, sed tantum dic verbo, et senabitur anima mea. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. I believe that you, O Jesus, are in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you and desire you. Come into my heart, I embrace you. O oh, never, never leave me. May the burning and most sweet power of your love, O Lord Jesus, I beseech you, absorb my mind, that I may die through love of your love, who were graciously pleased to die through love of my love. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, may this Holy Communion, the sign and promise of our unity in you, make that unity a reality in your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus Fobisco. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. Pater et filius et spiritus sanctus.